Um, hello everyone, my name is Lauren Tierney and I'm a graphics reporter at the Washington Post. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about a recent, well, um, the project that we published uh, back in the spring of this year on um, the 1968 riots that occurred in D.C. So uh, following the news of Reverend Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination on April 4th, 1968, rioting exploded throughout Washington, D.C. Um, leaving 13 dead and more than 900 businesses damaged. For the 50th anniversary of the riots and Martin Luther King Jr.'s death, the Washington Post mapped the extent of the rioting throughout the city, plotting <coughs> data compiled from declassified Secret Service reports and archival city planning documents. We had data compiled by Daniel Kreider of Brandeis University of Secret Service calls that were made during the rioting that we planned to show and map, but we also wanted to give a sense of the damage of the city. So my coworker Armand Amandjame and I coordinated with the DC library to make to take a look at some of the archive documents and maps they had documenting the damage. We found this map point locate we found this map um, in the DC archives um, mapping out point locations of citywide um, of citywide damage throughout throughout DC. And we also found, that, found maps highlighting which buildings in three major neighborhoods throughout the city of D.C. were damaged or completely destroyed during um, the few days of rioting that occurred in 1968. So after we found all of this data, and it was, which was really cool and exciting from the D.C. archives, um, we had to figure out a way to get it in digital format. Um, but guess what? No shape files for data from the 1960s. Um, so we had to digitize it, or like we like to call it, embrace the trace, um, <laughs> it, which is what we jokingly call it at the post. Whenever we have to digitize something really quick, we just embrace the trace and, and make it happen. Um, so before we could map all of this data, we had to digitize it. And um, so what I did was took scans and images of both the point dot map and the building map and digitize it. And just to give a sense, I feel like we never show kind of the rough cuts of some of the process, but um, this is a rough cut of the digitizing process. Um, so I used bright colors for the streets so that I could um, easily tell things apart. Um, this is using uh, DC open street data, which is really nice. Uh, DC has great open data for the city. Um, and then uh, I used actually, uh, because the images didn't, uh, didn't need to be distorted, um, I actually used Adobe Illustrator to do the digitizing using Map Publisher, um, which was a bit faster for me to do just because I'm a little bit more familiar doing um, tracing in, in Illustrator, which was really handy. And then from Map Publisher, I was able to export out uh, shape files of this so that we could use it um, in a digital format. Um, so we decided to, um, so we decided to, in the end, for this project, map um, all of the data that we had using um, using a map box base map. So um, while my coworker Armand worked on setting things up and and cleaning up the Secret Service report data, I started designing the ba base map and map box. Um, which I have to say, this was my first time actually using Mapbox Studio for a final product, and it was really exciting. I learned a lot. Um, and we wanted to go for a style that matched the 1960s time period. So we drew inspiration from some of the archive maps that we found um, while we were doing our, doing our research. Um, and so while, while Armand was working on that, I was experimenting with some base map styles. And I just have to say, this is like a little thing, but um, I love how in Mapbox Studio, this before you publish a map, you have this slider to tell the before and after. And when I'm in Mapbox Studio and just changing things by like 5%, 10%, it's really, and you feel like you're not changing much, it's rewarding to like, when you go to publish, it's like, oh, actually, like, I did a lot. So whoever added this feature, thank you. <laughs> um, and so once we had the data and maps in order, um, my coworker Danielle Rindler from Design and Armand worked to get them incorporated into the greater piece alongside, alongside archive photos and interviews with locals who experienced the riots back in the 60s. Um, I won't go into the full design process um, and the videos and archive photos, but I really recommend checking out the full piece if you get a chance. And I'll be posting these slides online, online later today. Um, and so in the piece, Armand took the base map that we designed for Mapbox 
and the data that he worked to clean up of these Secret Service calls to show kind of the buildup of what was going on um, over, over the course of a couple days and animated them on top of the base map in, um, in the larger project to show the burst of activity as the riots elevated. Um, the digitized building damage for the entire city was overlaid as well on another, on another section of the piece and um, we decided to use colors similar to those that we found in the 1960s maps um, just to keep that um, kind of aesthetic of 1960s cartography incorporated, um, which also worked well with a lot of the black and white photos and um, older photos that we were using in the project as well. Um, also, Armand did some cool magic with the building damage data. Um, so he tilted the map box map to look down the length of the neighborhoods, the three neighborhoods that we focused on. Um, to get a better sense of the extent of the building damage. And uh, if you want to learn more about the kind of more technology and coding behind what Armand did with the Mapbox maps, I recommend reading this post um, with an uh, interview with Armand about uh, th some of the tools he used um, for overlaying the data with the Mapbox maps. And um, again, I'll have these slides online with that link. So once we were done with the digital project, then it was time for the print one, uh, the print project. And um, we had about a three-day turnaround on this. So we knew we were going to do something for print, but we, um, so we kind of had some ideas, but we were so focused on the digital project that it was really like once that was out the door, it was like, okay, we got three days, like let's get this map together. And so once we had this, um, the size of the page defined, we had a, a double, um, a double track, which is um, which is a full two-page spread in in the mag or in the um, in the newspaper. And I do have to say, before getting assigned this, I did not know what a double track was, so that was <laughs> still learning all the newspaper terms. Um, and so we had this three-day turnaround, and so we got the group together and we did these whiteboard drafts, trying to figure out what we wanted to include and how we were going to organize things. So we knew we needed to map the Secret Service data. Um, that was also in the digital piece animated. And then um, we also wanted to highlight the three neighborhoods as well, which was, um, which, yes, we, so we wanted to include that as, um, as well. So we drafted things up before we dove into the software, before we dove into Illustrator. And so once we drafted up a few options, the option on the right was kind of the part where we left off and we felt comfortable taking it into Illustrator um, to get the layout set. Um, so before we did any of the mapping, we tested out the layout in Illustrator, but, bef but instead of building out the maps while working on the layout, we just took really quick screenshots from the map box maps, um, which was nice because sometimes you get caught up in, in making the map and you're trying to design the layout, and so it was nice to just take the quick elements, just rework them around. So we did a couple different options, one with DC with North up. And then we actually started experimenting with DC with North towards the top left corner of the page. Um, which was something we saw in a lot of the archive maps that we that we saw during our research, um, and so was, was part of the inspiration. Um, and then um, tweaked a little things, but this was a, essentially the final layout we came up with was to have the large map tilted and then have the three insets grouped together, and our plan was to have um, a chart across the top um, for, the, for a timeline of the Secret Service reports. Um, when, so when Armand and I were doing the archive research, I was constantly mesmerized by the style and design of these 1960s planning maps of DC. Um, and like I said before, most of which had north tilted to the top left of the page. And these really, what really intrigued me were these beautifully in, um, encased streets, just very, very clean, very crisp. Um, and I just kept coming back to that, both when we were designing the map box digital maps, but also when kind of brainstorming for, for the print piece as well. Um, and so we decided to, for the print piece for the newspaper, we decided to use the style of the maps um, mirrored after these planning documents. Um, and even using just, so black and white and gray for the base map, and then just using color only for the thematic elements um, on the map, similar to, to the images that we digitized from. And this was the final map that printed in the special section. So like I said before, it took up um, the space of a double track or a two page spread. Um, and um, yeah, so this was, this was the final product. And just to point out a couple things on this, since it's, it's a little hard to see on here. 
Um, so since we didn't have the luxury of animating the Secret Service data um, as we did in the digital format, we had to figure out how do we, how do we display this in, um, for print, this kind of escalation of events over time. And so we ended up going with this uh, chart along the top and matching the, the red on the map. And then uh, also in the print map, we had to figure out how to simultaneously show the Secret Service calls mapped and focus on the destruction of the neighborhood. So what we decided on was to map all of the calls on the larger, the full DC map, and then use locator boxes for the specific neighborhoods to zoom in and show, show the building damage that was, um, that was uh, categorized by the National Planning Commission. And so on this on the side so so on the side so this is where we included the neighborhood insets and uh, one thing to note too is I so I used Map Publisher to digitize but also use Map Publisher to um, to set up this whole page for the for the print version as well with the big copy over boxes over to the big map so that the locator locations were really accurate and also as you know if we had any updates with the data then those could be easily pulled in as well and for a three-day turnaround it was it was nice to have those um, those things rather than bringing new exports exports in um, and then I think one of my favorite touches on that we added to the map was the north arrow so we actually styled it after the National Capital Planning Commission map on the left um, not exactly, but we, we wanted to make it bold because we, since we rotated the map from a north up orientation to north facing the top left corner, we wanted to match the style of the 1960s, and this 1960s really bold style seemed to, seemed to do the trick for, for orienting the map. And one other thing you'll notice is on the, on the digital version or the screen version of the print map, the reds are really <laughs> vibrant, almost, almost a bit too vibrant. And we made these really vibrant because this was eventually gonna be printed on newspaper print. And once it's printed on that more muted newspaper print, we wanted to be sure that the thematic information would, would really pop on that, um, on that paper. And so um, if you'd like to see the newspaper print of this to see how kind of how those colors turned out, there's a copy of it in the map gallery now. So um, in the room next door, feel free to take a look and um, also feel free to stop by and ask me questions if, or make comments or anything. And um, thank you. Well, Lauren has left us plenty of time for questions, so uh, I open the floor and... How big was that team that kept referring to me? How many people were involved in this? Oh man, so it kind of so it kind of changed. So on the digital project, I worked very closely with with primarily two people, but this was you know we had someone from photo involved, we had a text editor involved, we had a writer involved, um, but for the actual mapping part, it, for the digital project, it was two. So designer um, and then another graphics reporter, and then for the print piece, um, it was primarily three of well there was there was overlap with the with the two people Danielle and Armand from the digital piece um, by the but for the print one it was um, we had input from from uh, from a lot of people that worked on it but for the print one it was myself um, Aaron Steckelberg who's a senior graphics editor who he helped a lot with with um, the layout and kind of the production process or getting things um, sent to the designers and then Ann Gerhardt who she did the writing for it and Any other questions? I will start with Mark. Um, oh, this is really fascinating. I, uh, while you were talking, I was thinking, though, would this be a great uh, base for having a new story which would look at what's going on there now, what kind of redevelopment would play? Yeah, and that's, that's a really great point. And I think that's something that there was actually um, a lot, so they published a bunch of different projects um, alongside this one at the Post. So there were various articles that were looking back in, back in 1968, and there was a really cool photo series they did where they took some of these archive photos, and then they went around to the neighborhoods and took photos now, and a lot of these neighborhoods have, have changed um, drastically. And so they did this kind of mirroring photos where the archive photos, and then it would fade into new photos, so yeah. But it would, be, it would also be cool for, for mapping as well. 
I was struck by that too, looking at the uh, looking at the detail for H Street corridor, H Street Northeast, which is now a, and, and relatively recently has been developed into a very thriving uh, nightlife community and uh, a lot of restaurants and things going on there. I think there was a question in the back. Um, oh, yeah. So what was the turnaround time from the digital part to the print? Yeah. yeah uh, so, oh, first thoughts about it. Well, I kind of started before the print one actually had to be done, um, started brainstorming like kind of a couple weeks before. Or it was always in the back of my mind because we, we knew we were going to have to, we knew we were going to need to do something for print, but we were so focused on digital. But from when the digital one finished and published and went out into the world to when we needed to ship the files for the print one, it was about, about three days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right, right. No, that's a really good question, and I know that I know that that came up when we were working earlier in the process, and I actually would need to review that. But it's it was a curious thing because it's 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 it was people calling in about things that they were they were seeing and whatnot. So, but I can I'll look that up, and yeah, we can we can regroup. So, because there were specifics on that. Yeah, Olivia. Yeah, so I mean, the map box, so really, um, I didn't pull anything from the map box. Really, I digitized the, the data and then that was put into map box. And so really for the for print, it was, I was grabbing, um, and I should have mentioned that, yeah, I was grabbing all new, all new data. So um, it wasn't from the map box template. So, but thankfully DC has a really great open data resource and so, getting the streets. Um, at one point I had parks on here and then getting the hydro and stuff. It was very, found the shape files, downloaded them and put them in. Um, not every city or state is like that though. So I was very lucky that I was able to pull down that, this really, really nice data so quickly. But um, yeah, so no, no real connection from the data from Mapbox to that except using the same thematic data shape files. Layers. <laughs> That's a good question. Well, I think, well, it's it's not. I mean, this map right here without the data on it is is definitely that monochromatic. But I think, I mean, I I was really fascinated by Daniel's talk yesterday, and when I was reviewing the slides um, like last night on this, I was like, oh wow, this is a, this is a lot of stuff that Daniel was mentioning, and. Um, I think like what Daniel was saying yesterday about really using color sparingly and for the really important stuff, um, that was really important for this map. And that was, I mean, with all those small data points and all those building points, I think that really helped. You know, you have the reference information um, and then just making that thematic um, information that's telling the story really pop. Yeah. So either on the map box side or on the shape files, I Mm -hmm. I'm curious how you uh, took it, took the feature set back to 1968, pulling out 395 or other crossings or uh, odds and ends around the district. Right, and so that did not happen. <laughs> I, I wish, I see that's the thing is I, it would have been wonderful and it's something when we were early on in this project we were talking about like, oh, what if we could map out the city exactly how it was with the timeline we work on at the post, it's not, yeah, we didn't have that time. And so for Mapbox, it's, it's, it's representing um, modern, modern data. And actually on the print map, if you go at the very bottom right in very small print, it says that the, the street data is, is based on modern, um, modern information. But I, I would have loved to have mapped it exactly how it looked if, if we had endless time, but we didn't, so we had to, but there's, there's notes, there's little caveat notes. <laughs> okay, I think we've run out of time, so I wanna uh, thank Lauren and all of our presenters for the session for.